This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Tacom's Mammut, Italeri's Barkino, Azur Frum's Spad 510, Hobby Boss's Little Skyhawk, Tacom's M114 with Interior, Ravel's 32 Ford, and a bunch of Ravel reissues, ICM's G7107 cargo truck and TU2, Italeri's Mercedes fire truck, and Volvo F12 rig, and a Ventura and a CH53D from Academy. New product rundown brought to you by HobbyZone USA, your source for hobby storage solutions, hard to find hobby tools, and aftermarket modeling needs. Welcome to New Product Rundown, Fine Scale Modeler's twice monthly look at the latest releases. I'm Kendra Bell. I'm Aaron Skinner. As you can tell from that intro, we have a stack of kits to get through. So let's dive straight in with Tacom's 135th scale VK 100.01P Mammut. This was a drawing board design for a heavy tank proposed by Ferdinand Porsche. But it never even reached the mock-up stage, instead giving way to the larger and more heavily armored mouse. But the vehicle has gained popularity thanks to the online game, World of Tanks, where it's a playable option. The massive hull builds from a belly, sides, glasses and upper surface, and optional engine decks that get photo etched metal screens. A louvered rear panel protected by a curved panel finishes the hull. Running gear comprises bogies that each get two paired road wheels and drive sprockets front and back. Detailed vinyl track lengths join with metal pins. The turret features molded weld seams. The hatches, including the one on the rear plate, are separate. And an internal mount fits into the bottom plate to fit into optional mantlets with cast texture. Each is designed to mount one of the optional guns. A turned metal alternative is given for the longer barrel. The decals give markings for four what-if vehicles. All an interesting camo, but obviously imagination is the limit here. That's exactly it. Kits like this supply a freedom that can be grounded in reality, or not. Here's Italeri's 135th scale MTM Barchino. This small, fast Italian boat was designed to be pointed in the direction of an enemy ship. At which point, the pilot jumped clear and the boat continued to the collision and would trigger an explosive mounted in the bow. Two of the boats successfully crippled the British cruiser HMS York at Crete in March 1941. The kit is pretty simple with a hull in halves, a three-part deck with the opening at the rear for the cockpit combing. The cockpit has an instrument panel on the front bulkhead and a seat. The photo etched metal screw attaches to the rudder, which along with the steering mechanism mount on the rear panel. Inside is a cylinder that I suspect is the explosive. A frame over the bow and some other equipment is probably the triggering mechanism. There's a stand for display and a pair of figures one standing, the other sitting in the cockpit. Decals supply dials for the dash, labels for the base, and numbers for two Barquinos, including one used in the attack on HMS York and one captured by USS Gleaves in 1944. If you're looking for something a little different, this might float your boat. From Azure From, we have a 172nd scale Blario Spad S510. This maneuverable French biplane fighter entered service in 1937. They started to be replaced with the Moraine 405 in 1938, but many were returned to service at the beginning of World War II. Surface detail on the fuselage is fine recessed panel lines with stressed fabric on the vertical tail. The same fabric texture can be seen on the lower wings and the upper wing and horizontal stabilizers. The nose with molded radiator and struts finish the airframe. Complementing frames molded inside the fuselage, the cockpit has a floor, bulkheads, instrument panel, seat, and controls. The wheels are molded with the spats. The only clear part is the windshield. The only difference between the kits is the decals. The 7th Escadre kit has markings for three pre-war aircraft with colorful fuselage art and large wing numbers. The at-war kit has three options, but they lack the fuselage art and upper wing numbers. These are seriously nice looking kits of a pretty biplane, and as far as I know, this represents the first time that this aircraft has been kitted at all. Sticking with 172nd scale aircraft, let's take a look at the Hobby Boss A4M Skyhawk. This is the third kit of Douglas's Bantam Bomber Hobby Boss is done, and represents an upgraded version built for the U.S. Marines. Surface detail on the fuselage includes engraved panel lines and the intakes as single parts with thin lips. 
The dorsal avionics hump is a separate part. The lower half of the wings is a single part with the belly, and the upper halves feature fine vortex generators. All of the control surfaces are molded in place. The cockpit has a tub with molded controls on the side consoles, one-piece seat, instrument panel, and shroud. The clear parts give a separate windshield and canopy. And a boarding ladder can be posed with the model. Stores and ordnance options include fuel tanks, sidewinders, and Mark 82 bombs with optional fuses on multiple ejector racks. Decals and color diagrams show options to mark two low-vis Marine Skyhawks in three-tone gray camouflage, one from VMA-214 and the other from VMA-311. Stencils and walkways are included. That's a sharp kit of an important airplane that should go together without too many issues. In episode 198, we took a look at Tacom's initial 135th scale M114. You can check out that video, as well as Chris Cortez's build review, at the link in the description. Now, as if hearing Chris's biggest knock against the kit, Tacom has released a version with an interior. Let's look at what's new, starting with the engine firewalls. These were actually in the original release, but had no details added. Now there are diamond pattern plates for the troop and driver's compartments, as well as the covers for the torsion bars. There's a driver's seat, air cleaner, instrument panel, and walls for the driver's cab up front. Racks of communication and other equipment line the left side, in addition to troop and commander seats, fire extinguishers and other bits and bobs, including what appear to be law rockets for the inside of the rear hatch. New parts provide a two-part commander's hatch and cupola, which mounts a new style of 50 caliber machine gun. Decals give markings for four M114s, olive drab vehicles in West Germany in 1964 and at Fort Riley, Kansas in 1966, and a pair wearing interesting camouflage for service in South Vietnam in the early 1960s. This kit should please fans of American armor and especially the M114 and provide plenty of fodder for dioramas. Next up, Ravel's 125th scale 32 Ford Roadster, which has its origins in several kits. But revised details allow for modern hot rods to be built. That includes a new interior with bench seat, unvented hood, and a Duval windshield. The decals offer flames and stripes for the body, dials, license plates, and even seat belts. It's a nice kit that offers builders plenty of options. Also nice is Ravel's 124 scale 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner, first released in 1995. The kit remains unchanged except for sharply printed decals that give the stripes, marker lights, dials, badging, and license plates. A similar reissue is the 125th scale 1981 Camaro Z28 that started life as a snap kit in 1981. Again, new here are the decals with beautifully printed stripes, including metallic ink, the lights, instruments, badges, and plates. The monogram 124th scale 55 Chevy Bel Air Street Machine originated in the 1960s, but remains a nice kit with plenty of options. What makes this release sing is the new decals, which provide all of the flag stripes for the American Hero Car, and titles for under pressure, tire branding and white walls, seat belts, and more. Ravel's 132nd scale Mac R conventional started life as a monogram snap fit in 1982, but it builds into a neat replica. This is the first time in a while it's been released without the tanker trailer. New decals supply stripe options, badges, warning placards, and license plates. ICM has civilized its 135th scale G7107 cargo truck that we looked at in episode 193. You can find that video and John Pelzak's workbench review at the link in the description. What's cool here is the marking options for surplus army trucks that found their way into the post-war market, including a post office truck in olive drab. Bright colors abound and each is called out by state and decade. To help achieve the colors, ICM has a set of acrylic paints to match those called out in the instructions. The decals supply license plates and marker lights. ICM's 172nd scale Tupolev TU-2 dates to 1997, and while the parts are starting to show their age with flash, it remains a decent kit that requires care but produces a good replica. The parts show fine surface detail, and there is good interior detail and clear parts. 
This kit marks the first time ICM has released the post-war torpedo bomber version, and there are parts for the weapons and the racks that fit under each wing at the root. Decals and color diagrams give markings for three TU-2s, one from the Black Sea Fleet in the late 1940s, a Bulgarian machine circa 1950, and a Soviet bomber in the Pacific Fleet. You know, it's great to see ICM refreshing some of its kits while it continues to produce exciting new releases. Italeri has been doing the same thing with some of its vehicle kits. The 124th scale Mercedes-Benz G230 started life as an ESCII kit in the 1980s. Italeri has reissued it a couple of times, with the latest being this fire truck. Appropriately, the body is molded in red, with the rest of the parts, chassis, interior, trim, wheels, and fire equipment molded in black. Each of the separate windows go in from outside. The tires are rubber and there's a sheet of self-adhesive license plates. In addition to dials and badging, the decals provide markings for four fire trucks, three German and one Italian. Likewise, Italeri's 124th scale Volvo F12 rig has been in the catalog since 1981. The boxy cab exterior builds from several panels and there's a decent interior. The kit features a detailed engine that fits into the chassis with axles and other mechanical elements. Multi-part wheels get wrapped with well-molded rubber tires. This kit includes optional accessories such as windshield visors, roof rack and ladder, and a pair of Michelin men. Decals and color diagrams show a choice of three trucks with striping, license plates, badges, and more. If commercial or emergency vehicles are your thing, these kits are good choices. From Academy, we have a couple of kits reboxed from other labels. Starting with a 148 scale PV1 Ventura, originally released by Ravel. You can read Jim Zeski's workbench review of that kit at the link in the description. New here are the decals for three U.S. Navy Venturas involved in the Solomon Islands Theater, Blonde Blitz, Scooter's Dream, and an aircraft that apparently carried out a successful raid against Japanese ships in the Truck Lagoon in July 1944. The other Academy kit is a 172nd scale CH-53D Sea Stallion. This kit started life as a Fujimi offering in the 1980s. It features recessed panel lines and the option to fold the tail, and cockpit and cargo bay details with a posable rear ramp. Most of the nose is provided as a clear part. New decals supply markings for two Sea Stallions involved in Operation Frequent Wind, the airlift of American civilians and at-risk Vietnamese from Saigon in 1975. Another pair of Reebok kits that should prove popular. Look for reviews of the Mammut, Spad, Skyhawk, 32 Ford, and more at finescale.com in the near future. Where you can also find a bunch of great how-to stories, videos, reviews, and more. And while you're there, don't forget to check out kalmbachhobbystore.com for tools favored by the FSM staff, paints, books, and more. Thanks for watching. I'm Aaron. I'm Kendra. See you next time. This kit should plan, plan fans. <laughs> plan please. This kit should please fans of American armor and especially the M114 and provide. Uh, <laughs> Talent time.